Good day fellow investors, the situation with Tesla stock is not nice and even if I have been a Tesla bear for the past years, I really think I can add value to Tesla investors by discussing three crucial things that they can apply to the current situation. The first thing is that you should completely forget about the noise. Secondly, you should put Tesla and keep it as part of an investment strategy into growth stocks. That should have a clear portfolio allocation, so you have to see where you are on that. And thirdly, I'll try to give you a way to find a solution on whether you should buy, hold or sell. That's very personal, but as always, as I have seen a lot of stocks and I have held a lot of stocks that would go down 50%, I think I can help you on the matter. Let's start. So this is a huge decline of 42% year to date over the last, what, five months. And I really don't think that the risks have increased that much compared to the reward in relation to what was the situation a few months ago. So I really believe that this decline is due to market sentiment as was the upside earlier. So if you can eliminate the noise from this, let's say, speculative investment, then you can make the proper decision. If we look at what the market now is saying, it's all doom and gloom. Uh, market targets of $10, uh, slicing prices, selling crisis, how much money famous YouTubers lost on this stock, etc. Wall Street predicts Armageddon, but this is crazy. In just five months, the stock went from being a market darling with 3,000 price targets to being the most hated with $10 price targets. In this crazy environment, you should really focus on three things. In this crazy environment, you should really focus on three things. The reason you bought the stock in the first place, what was your strategy then? And did it change now just because the market sentiment changed? Tesla is still making cars, is still planning on growing, just issued capital, they are still selling cars, uh, everything is still like it was a few months ago with the same projections in the same range, better, higher, etc. So see how the risk reward of the long term picture fits your investment and your portfolio strategy and don't get, don't get confused by the talking heads around YouTube or on Wall Street. Those will always be talking heads. One thing to see is to look at what institutional investors are doing. And as you can see, they are also under the influence of market sentiment. The yield on the Tesla Motors 2025 bond has really increased over the last week, but we can see that those ups and downs have been regular over the last years, in this case, since the bond was issued 2017. So, okay, interest rates are going up, but those increases are not that significant. And we can see that actually up till a few weeks, the bond was priced at 86 as it was at the beginning of the year. So institutional investors didn't see much change even if Tesla's stock price fell 40% over the period. Only in the last few weeks, the yield increased again, but again, not that much to justify a 40% stock price. So be careful about market noise because institutional investors are still pretty stable and they just added capital to Tesla. The second thing you have to keep in mind is, okay, Tesla is a growth stock. It's a risky stock. As long as they need capital injections, it means it is risky. Now, this doesn't mean nobody should invest in it. It just means that you should keep it as part of a strategy, which makes things much, much easier. There is a chance Tesla will go bankrupt. There is a chance Tesla will explode. And if you go to the master of such investments, if we go to Peter Lynch, in this case, beating the street, then you can see how he used to hold such growth investments and then he would be happy if just one of the 10 growth stocks he owned did very well. Because if let's say you own 10 such growth stocks as Tesla and it is part of a strategy, one becomes a 10 bagger, 
even if the other nine, which is unlikely, go bankrupt because there will be takeover, someone will take over Tesla at some price. So even if that all of that happens, you still get ahead. And with such growth, growth stocks, there is the possibility that those become 10 beggars. Actually, when you have a growth stock strategy in part of your portfolio, let's say like this, your portfolio is 40% value with five stocks, 40% growth with 10 stocks, and then you have another 20% in cash to balance around for opportunities. Now, when you have that growth part of your portfolio strategy, then you will be constantly looking for growth stocks and you might even buy them early before others see them. If we look at Tesla's long-term stock chart, we can see that, okay, it is still a 10-bagger for the early growth investors. And now you have to see whether Tesla is part of your portfolio and part of a strategy. If you don't have a strat strategy, then you have to reorganize your portfolio and have a clear strategy related to the risks and rewards of holding such companies. Don't bet on promises, use statistics, no matter whether you are a growth or value investor. And then I emphasize, if growth is part of your strategy, having a growth strategy allocation of 10 stocks, something like that, increases the likelihood of finding those 10 beggars early before everybody else is chasing the stock like it was the case with Tesla or it is the case with Tesla. Growth investors bought it at 19 in 2010. Those chasing bought it at 400, 300 a year ago. So that's a big difference. Make it part of your strategy and you'll do much, much better in the future. Now, how to get to the answer whether to buy, hold or sell? Well, I think that first you have to eliminate emotions from your portfolio. If you feel bad now because Tesla stock dropped so much over the last five months, that means that you are under the influence of emotions when it comes to investing, which is not good. So what you have to do is, okay, what are the worst, what is the worst case scenario? What is the best case scenario? And then see, okay, how would all those scenarios impact me personally? If you cannot handle a worst case scenario, then you should sell immediately and take your losses, cut your losses. If you say, if, look, if you look at your portfolio, okay, I understand the risk and reward. If you need a worst case scenario uh, analysis, you can always check my video on Tesla. As I said, I was a bear and I made videos that it is too risky, but check it, see how it fits your risk reward of the portfolio and then it will be much easier to make the decision. Investing at the end, it's always personal. It's always your personal finances. It's always your personal money. You work for that money. So you have to put that personal component, but try to not make an emotional decision, but rationally estimate what's going on in relation to your personal situation. Worst case scenario, best case scenario, see how it fits and whether you can survive whatever happens. And the last message, I see a lot of youngsters. I still have the picture of all my students on accounting class that were all about Tesla, 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 Bitcoins. And then I've seen them lose a lot of money with big Bitcoin. Hopefully they are better now. And now I see them again, lose money with Tesla. And my hope is don't get discouraged from investing. This is this happens usually if it hit you personally and you have a big loss, it's usually because you still don't have an investment strategy. Long term, if you have a good investment strategy, you will be very, very well off. But don't make this discourage you from learning about invest investments. Take it as an expensive lesson, but a lesson you can make a lot of money in the future by finding the next Teslas, the next great investments etc. So thank you for watching. Tomorrow, please tune in again because we'll be discussing my complete strategy for a stock market crash or individual stock market crashes like it was the case with Tesla. If you liked this, let's say, statistical approach to investing, please subscribe to this channel because we are all about risk and reward. Thank you and I'll see you in the next video.